the Cahoots Mate Gaming Podcast. Mate. Mate. <laughs> Welcome back to this shit show of a podcast. Um, yep. I am still have shitty, horrible audio quality because I haven't figured out life yet and I'm sure I'll get there at some point. But for some reason, you sound much better than I do. So, <laughs> and I'm the host of this, of this I mean, meeting. I, so. I don't know. I am the boy, so. You're a peak specimen, mate. Peak specimen. Peak specimen. Um, yes, this is the Cahoots Make Gaming podcast where we're going to talk about things we like in the gaming world, I suppose, something like that. And I was like listening back to the last one and I know the, the audio was quite bad on my end. <clears throat> but I also didn't realise how monotone my voice was. <laughs> Talking to you, it's like... <laughs> You're like rainbows and sunshine, and I'm just fucking doom and gloom. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. Uh-huh. I'll sort out my, my radio voice in the future as we as yeah. we do this thing. So I'm just as we move my... forward, move yeah. forward, jumping through <laughs> on the back of sheep, rainbows and unicorns, but following them. I, I couldn't the have said any pastures. <laughs> <laughs> and looks like a better mate. So we've both been playing The Last of Us too. Yeah, yeah, we have. We have. I haven't yeah. spoken to you about it today, so I'm assuming you're probably ahead of me now. We both haven't. I mean, I have played quite a bit of it today. I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to like say too much, just in case mm-hmm. I ruin it for you. But I mean, you were quite ahead of me. Alright, um, spoiler free. Whereabouts are you up to? Um, spoiler free. I'm at the Sky Towers. I don't know if that's going to ruin it for you. I mean, shouldn't. That's where I am. Sky Bridges. Sky Towers. What character are you playing as? I'm playing as Abby. Okay, yes, you are a little bit before me. I am, uh, where did I get out of yesterday? I'm not far into Abby's story. I think I'm still in Seattle day one. So I don't think, I think you've surpassed me now. Right. I believe. What, you're on, you're in, you're in Abby's story. You're playing as Abby story. I think I yeah. was pretty much just at the aquarium. I'm pretty sure I might be ahead of you then, because I'm pretty sure I'm on Seattle day two or three as Abby. So yeah, cool. All right. I think that's, I might be. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. We're, we're caught up as to where we are. We're, we're trying not to spoil each other as we go through it. Nah, yeah, but yeah. That's, that's like, the only thing. I didn't like the only thing I will say is I, I didn't realize that you would actually end up playing as Abby. Like when we got to the part in the the theater, the the, the theater room, as Ellie, I thought that was going to be pretty much come up to the end of the game. Yeah, that's what I thought. When you got to that piece of gameplay and you had the scene <laughs> that where, <happened. laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah. again, obviously, there's going to be people listening to this, hopefully, that haven't played it. We don't really want to ruin it for you guys, to be fair. So we'll try not to ruin it too much. Um, but no, yeah, I f- that I thought that was where it ended because you got f- the Last of Us, the first one. It wasn't really that long, was it? I mean, it was a good game, and you could drag it out if you wanted to. But mm. this second one seems a hit, unless I'm just exploring quite a bit just to get the um, the playing cards and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, 
I think this is massively longer than the first one. It seems to be. I think I am about 19 hours into it, and I don't see an ending coming yet. <clears throat> well, soon anyway. Nah. Yeah, well, um, I'm quite far into it as well now, so... And I didn't, like... I didn't expect you to play as anyone else when I first um, found, started playing it, to be fair. Yeah. But I think that they've got the other storylines in there and you get to see them going through their struggles and stuff too. It puts into perspective why they did what they did early on yeah. in the game and that there is a whole world out, out there outside of Joe and Eddie as well yeah it's not it doesn't just revolve around them although you, you've become to <clears> like <throat> love that Joel and Ellie as a whole hmm. um, it does put at first I'm not going to lie I thought Abby was a bit of a knob I didn't, I didn't, but now that I've played more of the game and I've started to play her storyline, yeah. I can maybe kind of see, I still think, but again, I'm going to be maybe a little bit biased that what they did shouldn't have much. happened. Yeah. It was a bit excessive. It was a bit excessive. There is a part in Abby's story where someone says that to you as well, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, they say they they say that to her, and they say that things could have been done differently. Mm. But then she, um, Abby says, doesn't she? Like um, they made their be beds. Basically, they killed themselves by killing them. Everyone else, thank you. Yeah, yeah. See, I was. Um, how do I put this in a non-spoiler context? You know, at the end of the first game, well, I'm right. assuming everyone who's listened does play the first game. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going like, sure, yeah. to like. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, as you go in to take Ellie from the surgery table. Mm -hmm. Did you shoot the doctor? I didn't shoot the doctor. I am mm. um, stabbed him with the surgical knife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you still killed him. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I just shot both of people in the room straight away. And I, was just... I, didn't, I didn't shoot the other doctors, though. Okay. The, one that ran at, the one that ran at me, he got killed. Yeah. I left it at that. I left it at that, and then I left the room. Okay. So I mean, obviously... Yet. How you do um, it has a different turnout into yeah. how he subjects into this story. It's, it's, it's quite weird because as well, in this game, in The Last of Us 2, they keep having flashbacks mm -hmm. early and um, you play as a character named Abby as well. well obviously, we've, we've let people know. I mean, again, uh, you don't want to spoil it, but surely people must know that you get, you get to play as more than one character by now. Yeah, and um, she's in right at the start of the game as well, so it's no big spoiler. Yeah, you you do control her quite early on. Yeah, yeah, you do control her quite early on. Um, but they have flashbacks as well, and the whole storyline from the first one intertwines with this one as well, like with um the fireflies and. Mm. Who you're fighting in this one? It all intertwines together. Yeah. Which and I don't think it would so much be in so many years later. But... No. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's quite weird. It's it's at one point I did get confused. I did get confused. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like it, is this before? Am I play? I'm playing as Abby right now. But is mm. this before? Um, Abby's met Joel and Ellie 
or is this after? There is a few parts where I'm I'm playing as Abby, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know if this is before or not. I think some parts some... are like the bit with the zebra. Yeah. I think yeah that that would have been just before yeah. So I don't know. I need I need to catch up to where you are. So yeah. Uh, there, there is a about it off, of, uh, off, off, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, 21 hours in, nice, yeah, Couple of hours ahead of you. <coughs> yeah, 21 hours in, Excellent. yeah, so, um, yeah, it's quite. It's, a, it's quite a ride of a game, isn't it? To be fair, considering yeah. how long, how long it is. Oh, definitely, definitely, it's definitely taken over my evenings, and it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It takes you on a fucking roller coaster, like the first one did, but this one I think even more so, to be honest. Yeah, I think this one, I might. It's, it's getting a special p fucking place in oh, in like yeah. my heart and that like it's a good it is a good game and mm -hmm. and I get I, people are still like kind of like hating on it a bit um but I mean I don't know I I love this I love this game La the Last of Us Two it is. It is ridiculous. It is a really, really, really good game, and I mean, I, I don't know if it's because I'm a big believer in like, pers but this game is making me f like feel stuff. If you get what I mean. Yeah. Like at the beginning, you're playing the game. You, you've you've just played the, you've played the first one. You've completed the first one. You turn this one on. And you carry on from where the first one ends, basically. Yeah. Um, where obviously fucking you're in the vill you're you're in the city with Tommy and um, Joel and Ellie and all that are there, and it, it's just drama straight off the bat, but it's good drama. Yeah. <laughs> this. This is a program. If this was a TV program, I I would be hooked. I couldn't Which stop watching it. And the cut scenes, the cuts again. Uh, people are complaining about. I don't get why you can complain about the cut scenes. I mean, um, the further you get on in the game, the cut scenes are great. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, it's, it's pushing that kind of next gen -y kind of graphical style as well now. You know what I mean? Because we're at the life expectancy ending of the, the PS4, so we're starting to see what the PS5 yeah. could like could look like. So I don't know about you, but my PlayStation turns out chair engine. I mean, <clears throat> my PlayStation um, doesn't, but I, obviously I've got the, I, I, you've got the very got first the PlayStation yeah. 4, haven't you? Obviously, whereas I've got the PS4 Pro, so mine's is a little bit newer than yours. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to ruin it for some people. I have noticed a few times lag and glitches where I've found glitches and lag. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that can happen in any game. Yeah. I there was to... one. Well. There was sorry. There was one um, glitch that I had where it looked like Ellie's arm had broken, and it was just out the whole time. Her um, left arm. Her left arm was out the whole time, and it was just like up, up and out, <laughs> okay. and it was stuck like that. 
Wow. And that's the the we- the hand that you hold a weapon with. So she yeah. was holding a shotgun and she was shooting forward, obviously, but she wasn't shooting forward. She was shooting to the side because the shotgun's to the side, the, cro- the crossbows to the side, the, the pistols right. to the side. But I mean, all I did with that was save, quit, load back in, and it was fixed. Mm. So I don't know what happened there, but... And then there's been a couple of times where my screens went fully white. Yeah, I've had, Other um, than that. I've had a similar. I've had, I was crouching by a tank and the screen just went black apart from Ellie and the yeah. tank. That was weird. Um, but that yeah. fixed itself. And another one was the, I can't remember what I was doing. I was just exploring, but I got stuck in a corner and I, I just kept like falling. So I had to restart it. But that was literally only two <coughs> very yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. The thing is, though, even though that's happened to me and that's happened to you, we still think that it's a quality game. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I might actually segue that over to uh, <laughs> speaking of quality games. We, what we was actually going to talk about this podcast was our. Uh, 10 favorite games. Well, I'll say favorite games. It's so top tens, top tens, deadly tops. Top, yeah, <laughs> and now <laughs> my phone is frozen and I can't open my top tens. So, what I've done, yeah, we're going to talk about our top 10 games that are our favorites or that bring us the most memories out of playing them or something, you know. It's subjective. Um, yeah. But the last time we crossed lists, I believe the only game we had in common, which we might as well talk about first, was Pokemon Yellow. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've changed my list a little bit since I've spoken to you, but I've still kept Pokemon Yellow on there. Yeah. See, what, what I've done with my list, I've taken out sports games. So, yeah. it's only Hawks. I haven't got... WWE's, yeah, they're out. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they're quite like weird, weird games. I mean, you could probably get, if you genuinely loved Tony Hawks and genuinely loved, you could put them in your top 10 and get away with it. Mm. But I mean, I did, but um, they're out. <laughs> they're out. These are, these mm. lists literally are games that have given us memories. I mean, yeah. a lot of mine, some people might say, well, when did this fucking bell start gaming me? A lot of his are quite new. I mean, because <laughs> I've played them and I've loved them that much. Because I've got two lists. I've got an honorable mentions list and mm-hmm. my top 10. Yeah. Some games have pushed games out of my top 10 because they were that good, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with Pokemon Yellow. I reckon we're probably both going to have quite different perspectives of this game and the way we played them. Um, because with mine, I played, obviously, Pokemon... Did I play Red or Blue? I'm pretty sure I played both on the Game Boy back when they first came out. <clears throat> but my memory of Pokemon Yellow was actually an emulated version on the on the PC that I once played through my school summer break for the whole six weeks, non-stop, every day. And that makes me sound like a proper recluse, which I was, but that was my experience with Pokemon Yellow, just a, a emulated version on my PC, and it was fucking incredible. Was that the first time that you ever played it on the yeah. emulated version? Yeah, never had it on you cartridge. Pl- so the first one you played was um, Pokemon Blue or Red? Yeah. Uh, sweet. <laughs> I mean, mine... <clears throat> My my Pokemon Yellow experience 
is a little bit different to yours, obviously. Mm. Because you still got your copy, haven't you? I've still got my Pokemon Yellow copy, yeah. I'm um, well happy that I've still got it. Nice, nice. I think CEX are trying to sell it like cartridge only for Pokemon. Yeah, crazy. that's the thing. That's the thing. Obviously, <clears throat> my um, Pokemon Yellow, I, I got the Pokemon Yellow, but I'd never had it. It was originally um, my dad's. It was my dad's. Okay. And he bought it on release date. And then he just literally just gave it to me at one point when I was old enough. Because Pokemon Yellow, when it was released, and obviously in 1998, I was only... Make me feel old. Yeah, I was only like seven years old. Yeah. So I mean, I was literally yeah. that was me when I was a young boy collecting Pokemon cards and that. And my dad yeah. saw how many Pokemon cards I had, bought me a Game Boy, gave me his copy of Pokemon Yellow, and then yeah. it's it's um the rest is history. I lost um, my Game Boy when we were moving house. Yeah. And then I got um, a Game Boy Advance SP, which still plays Love Pokemon that, Yellow. So. Um, and I've still got that as well. So I've got the original cartridge that my dad bought, release date. And I've got my original Game Boy Advance SP with Pokemon nice. Yellow. And you don't even understand the amount of times that I've completed Pokemon Yellow. <laughs> you don't even understand. Like that game, it just, it just brings back memories. It just brings back memories. We um, won't talk about that, so you <laughs> Yeah, I think we may possibly, like, have to. I mean, I didn't buy Let's Go Pikachu. I bought Let's Go Eevees because, obviously, again, people are going to be like, well, why Why did you have Pokemon Yellow? Well, I just told you why I had Pokemon Yellow. My dad gave it to me. <laughs> it's thingy. I gave myself Eevee, well, mate. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I could have uh, Pokemon Eevee, mate. I picked Pokemon Eevee because Eevee is my favorite fucking mm -hmm. Pokemon. I'd, I'd make an, the later on Pokemon games, I used to just make an Eevee decks basically. I'd have a team yeah. of Eevees. Well, that that they would are be the it. most uh, uh, versatile Pokemon, I suppose. Yeah. I've just um, turned my Pokemon Yellow and my Game Boy on. Um, I'm not that far into this playthrough of playing it again, and mm. I'll tell you the um, team. I'll tell you the team that I have. First, I'll get the map up, and I'll tell you where I am in the map. Cool. I'm on Route 11, Route 11 on Pokemon Yellow. So I'm not that far into it. I've literally just came out of the um, the ship. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I remember. Yeah. My Pikachu is level 26. I've got the um, Squirtle, which I've mm -hmm. evolved into Water Tool, mm -hmm. um, level 17. I've got a Sand True, level 16. A Bulbasaur, level 15. My Charmander, obviously, um, level 13. And a Magikarp, level 5. Just because Magikarp, man. Get that Gyarados. Magic art. <laughs> exactly. Splash me. Splash. Exactly. You just got to yeah. splash, and then as soon as splash disappears, you struggle about, mate. <laughs> struggle <laughs> about. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to knock a couple off my list that are 
but I won't talk about too much. They'll probably sell them to the industry. Assassin's Creed 2. I don't think I really need to explain myself on that one. Nah, I can I can see Assassin's Creed um in one shape or another being on a lot of people's top tens. Yeah, a lot of people's top tens. Yeah. Um, Hitman Blood Money. I played through this. I played through that on the Xbox 360, the PS2, and PC. <clears throat> I think that was on the Xbox 360 when I completed it on the hardest difficulty setting as well. And I just love it because it's got one of my favorite game, fake, favorite, favorite gaming moments right at the end where you're laying on your, uh, essentially like the whole FBI's of your funeral and you're in this like really cool white suit and you essentially just get up and just start shooting everyone in the, in the church. It's incredible. Um, the one I will stop at is actually you no know, i'll say dragon age because the first dragon the first two three dragon age games i fucking love dragon age dragon age origins and dragon age 2. yeah so, um Grand Theft have, you not Simon play- huh? have you not played um dragon age inquisitions yeah do, do you know what? i played that game because I really, I was, I love Morrigan, the character Morrigan. And in Inquisition, it was like, because she disappeared for one game. Yeah. And I wanted to know where she, where, what her story was. And I was playing through Inquisition, waiting to find the Morrigan story. And it just, I don't know, it just bored me. And I just couldn't play it again. No. And I don't know what it was about it. I know it's the only Dragon Age game we've had on this generation. But I just didn't like it. This one, um, yeah, and the last one, obviously, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. That's that's probably on a lot of people's lists. I thought I'd just uh, knock out a few that I won't go talk much about because I have reasons and stories for the rest of these ones. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Yes, for some of yours. Nah, right. So obviously we've spoken about Pokemon Yellow. So I've still got nine games on my list that I've um, got left, left to talk about. I mean, I've got quality. Where where do I start? I think I'm I'm probably going to start with. um, Would you kindly? Would you kindly? But would you kindly? Good old. Bioshock <laughs> One, Bioshock One, yeah. no, no, Bioshock Two was the worst. <laughs> Bioshock Two was the worst. I hated that game. Yeah, I hated that game. Literally, Bioshock One, the whole story, that, that another game where it makes you perspective, it makes you just think and choose and. Yeah. What what would what would you do? And if you lose your mind, what would happen when you lose your mind and stuff like that? People mm-hmm. would be thinking, "Mate, this guy got all of this from Bioshock." Yes, I did. I did get all of that from Bioshock One. It's a quality game. It's a quality game with the Andrew Ryan storyline and just the. They are, even I'm getting tingles just thinking about it. The would you kindly finding out that that was his trigger word and he was controlling him the whole time? Yeah. <sighs> See, I uh, I did love Photoshop, but I can only do the one playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> See, me, I've got um, this is just going to prove that it's one of my favorite games of all time. I've got it on Xbox One, the trilogy. I've got the trilogy on PS4. I've got the trilogy on Switch. So I've got the trilogy on all three. And I've got it on PlayStation 3 as well. So, I mean, I've got 
Bioshock on like four consoles. <laughs> so, but no, yeah, Bioshock One. It's got a special, special place, special place um, in my fucking heart of like loving games. The you next one, on I actually can. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's great. I love that it's got released on the Switch. Mm. I love that. Um, I might as well continue <clears throat> the Bioshock theme. Not the second one. The second one sucks, but the third one, Bioshock Infinite, Infinite yeah. that is on my top ten as well. Oh, In my opinion, my favourite one is the third one. Again, I, I it's, 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 it's a different different character that you're playing as. You're not playing as um thingy anymore. You're playing as Booker in this third one. Yeah. Which again I, I obviously I'll I'll just tell you basically. You, you've played the third one, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Um Booker gets so he's a private investigator and he's got to bring this girl, which it turns out that it's his own daughter and it's, tra- it's got trans-dimensional travel in there. It's how they've merged it all together is great because the Latus twins, they're, it, it, you, you think that they're brother and sister, but they're not. They're the same person. So mm. one's a boy in one dimension. And then in the other dimension, the other one's a girl. Yeah. And they've went to the same dimension, and basically the dimensions just rip in slowly. And in this dimension, Booker DeWitt is a private investigator, but in the other dimension, that is um, his daughter. And he's basically giving away his daughter without realising and he's fighting to get her back and I just love the whole storyline again of the slogan, the the Bioshock I don't get it, 2K the slogans that they made like, would you kindly for Bioshock 1 and the the third one bring us the girl and wipe with debt it just draws you in it draws you in to think and you just you think and you play the game and it's Bioshock 3 um, it's got a little bit extra to it as well from the whole bit with like the um, it's set back in time like in the 50s so you'll see people walking about in their weird swimming costumes that they used to walk about in. They've still got a little bit of like um, racism in there with the throwing the stones and the tomatoes at yeah. the mixed race couple. Yeah. Obviously, I never threw I never threw it at the couple. I always threw it at the announcer. And yeah. if you threw it at the announcer later on in the game, you'd go into a bathroom and they'd be there and they'd be like thank you for doing what you did and they'd give you some free shit and I always did that to get the free stuff if you didn't do it and you threw it at them the same outcome would happen you'd go to that bathroom they wouldn't be there and you wouldn't get the free stuff so that was like a little again a little mini easter egg they had in the game but I mean like I said I always ever threw at the announcer Mm. yeah Um, Mm. but no yeah Bioshock 1 and 2 they are um, quality quality games Um, I'll probably talk about Super Super Mario World next yeah again I've got I got Super Mario World on the um, Game Boy Advanced SP Mm-hmm. Again, I've still got I've still got the cartridge, um, and I play that profu- profusely as well. I just I can't stop playing that. Like I mean, Super Mario World, 
It's like one of the, if not the best <clears throat> Mario game That's ever. It's like, Online as well. um, yeah, yeah, it is. it's on the Switch Online. It's on the, obviously, SNES, because it, originally it came on the SNES. The Game Boy version was a port. The Game yeah. Boy Advance was a port, obviously. It was, it was, it's still a good port, and because it was on the cartridge, and the cartridges were getting bigger, they put the original um, Super Mario Bros on there as well, okay. where you're in the dungeon, and you've got the pow blocks, and you've just got the little um, red fire um, tortoises just continuously coming out, and you just battle waves of them trying yeah. to kill them. That's on. That's on there as well. Um, but then my favourite Mario game, my favourite Mario game, and this is only because I am pretty sure this is the first one where you can play as Luigi. And I get that it's Mario and he's the face, but I prefer Luigi. I prefer Luigi. It's Mario and Luigi Super Star Sega. Mario and Luigi Superstar Sega. <clears throat> it's yeah. um kind of like Mario does um Final Fantasy slash Pokemon. That's probably the best way to explain it. Mm -hmm. Because you're in a 3D top down side view the camera angle changes throughout the whole game but the storyline's great with um bowser and there's a woman her name is um clack letter right. you've got clack letter basically you've got to try and help surely people have played at least one of the mario and luigi sagas because there's loads you've got bowser's inside story you've got dream team bros You've got um, partners in time, and they're all part of the Mario and Luigi saga. Yeah. Um, but the very first one that started it all, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, and every single person in the comment section, majority of the time of Nintendo, I see, they want a remake, and it needs to be done. Like they've brought these remakes to DS. Yeah. Well, and Bowser's in Tori. Yeah, Partners in Time. <clears throat> You've got Superstar Sega. They need to bring it to the Switch. They brought it to the DS. And mm. I didn't play it on the DS because obviously I already had it and I played it on Game Boy and I've still got the cartridge. Mm. But if they brought that to Switch, so many extra people would be happy. And I'd, I'd buy that. I would buy that. It is, it is just such a great game. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> what's, uh, what's next? Ooh, The Sims. Which is a, a weird one, but that's, that was a bit like Pokemon, Pokemon Yellow for me. When I found The Sims, the weird life simulator game that EA made. Um, Maxis, is it Maxis? Yeah. It was. Uh, I just had, I had a really crap PC, so it couldn't run much, but it won the Sims. And that was one of my summers playing the Sims. Just installing all the mods, installing all the, the naked mods like a teenager would. Uh, and just fucking around. Uh, again, that was just. I sound. I really do sound like I was a bloody hermit, to be honest. But it was a, a lot of it is just remembering summers of playing my PC when I had one. Um, yeah. Uh, next is Urban Chaos. I don't know if you remember Urban Chaos. Yeah. I had that on PS One, yeah, and that was. That. That was kind of the first 
open world game, I suppose, I ever really played. I think that's why it stood out to me, because you could kind of do anything, you know, you could blow up what you wanted, you could kill who you wanted, and it was just stupid fun, which is what sometimes you need, just dumb, no nonsense, blowing people up and, and shit like that. Um, and this one might be controversial. Fall out New Vegas. And um, obviously people are gonna say, oh, why not Fall Out Re? I don't know what it was about Fall Out New Vegas, but I put hundreds of hours into that game over Fall Out Re. And I don't know why. Like the, I, I think the story grabbed me a bit more. And I, just, I don't understand why everyone hated this so much. I really don't. But that was one of my one of my favourites. Um, I've got a couple more. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about one more. You can get through some of yours. <laughs> um, the next one. I'm not really into Japanese RPGs too much. I don't really play Final Fantasy or anything like that. But there was a game on the PS3 called The White Knight Chronicles that came out in this uh, quick look in 2009. And it was, I don't know what made me buy it because I would never use to buy a game like that just by looking at it. But I saw it on the shelf where I worked at the time and I picked it up and I think it was because the main character was called Leonard in this massively Japanese game they had a main character child called Leonard and it was weird. And uh, he had turned into this, I think once once they hit a certain age they get a, I think it was called a Magi or something that, that connects to you and his was a giant white knight and essentially you went round this massive world just fighting other I don't remember too much of the story but I remember it being a really fucking good game and it was like your basic turn based you know, Japanese RPG probably doesn't stand out to any real JRPG fans but to me I fucking loved it um, yeah yeah that's all I really remember of that one because I read it up on Wikipedia and reading through it, I was like, my God, I did not remember much of the story. But for some reason, I just remember sitting there at the time, playing it on my little fucking 20-inch screen and loving every minute of it. Yeah. I've only got yeah. one more on my list now, so uh, <laughs> shoot yeah. us with yours. Right. The next one I might as well talk about is um, it's a PlayStation 3 game. And I'm surprised they haven't made a trilogy or a remastered trilogy or even a collection maybe for PlayStation 4. They might do maybe in the, um, when the PlayStation 5 comes out, yeah. um, is Resistance, the third one. Okay. Res Resistance 3. Um, Resistance 3 Obviously, it follows on from the second one where you were playing as um, Nathan Hale. You were playing as Nathan Hale in the first one because in the first one, you're, you're in the army. It's just landed. The enemies have just come out of um, the chimeras have just come out of where they were hiding and stuff. And the second one, um, at the end, and at the start of the third one, the player that you played as in the first and second one, Nathan Hale, died. He gets killed, um, and then you play as a guy named Joseph Capelli. And yeah. the third one, although the second one and the first one were really, really good, I just like how um, the game... It reminds me, it came out um, not that long ago, mm -hmm. 
It came out in 2011. 2011, September 9th. And I mean, the game, it, it just, it makes you feel like you're playing as um, Joseph Capelli. You're walking around and you just, you're trying to, you thought that Nathan Hale was a cure, but he wasn't, he dies, and that's it. There's no, they're, they've started terraforming the earth. Yeah. And the humans have um, started, like, ceasing to exist. With the extra enemies, you've got the runners. I get that they're not called runners. And you've got the Grims as well. Again, they're not called Grims, but I mean, to anybody who knows like about zombie movies and all that kind of stuff, you know, you when I say Grims and Runners, you will know exactly the ones that I mean. The lot, the the the, the, ta um, the tall, lanky ones. Yeah. yeah. I, I used to just call them Grims. They weren't called Grims, but I mean, they were Grim. <laughs> I remember like trying to complete it on the hardest difficult way, and I just I just couldn't couldn't do it because there was one bit where you'd get and there was an alleyway. Um, I don't know if you've played the third one, but there's an alleyway, and you have to like run through the alleyway. And at first you can get to it silently, but there's a bit where you have to turn a corner, and then you just get attacked by fucking Grims. And there's m fucking millions of them, but you've got no choice. You've got to go down that alleyway. Yeah. But I kept doing it. I kept doing it. And the reason why I kept doing it, because the storyline of the game, you're in, it's in 1953. So it's got the whole, the niche 1950s kind of like style with the cafes and the old timey cars and the old timey outfits so and you've got thing. World War Two um that has just happened and stuff. It's just Yeah. One of them games that will always have a place what? in my um <clears throat> Art, yeah. Um, the next game I'll talk about, um, which I actually added after I spoke to you, saying that we, this is what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I added it, because this was the first, and I thought I had to add it because I still play it now, Call of Duty Black Ops 1. The that was the, the numbers, the numbers, That's Mason. <laughs> that, that almost made it for my almost. Yeah, I, I, I had to add that because, again, that was the first Call of Duty where I actually completed the campaign. Mm -hmm. That was the first Call of Duty where I actually completed the campaign. All the others I say that I'm going to complete the campaign, but I yeah. never do. I think that was the only campaign that's been intriguing. Mm. And again, a lot of people say... I loved Call of Duty Zombies, and I've got every single Call of Duty that has zombies on it. I think Blops 1, Black Ops 1, um, the zombies on that was the best. Again, yeah, people would be like, no, World at War, come on, was the best. It was original, it was nice. Kino, man. Kino... <laughs> Dare Toten, the fear yeah. of the dead. I mean, that's all you have to say. Yeah, fear yeah. okay. of the dead. That map was so good. I think at one point, literally, I was running around. I, I was well, I was really good at zombies. Really good mm. at zombies. I just had the Olympia the two pump off the wall. Mm -hmm. I got rid of my pistols and I got the carbine. You've got the carbine and the two pump as soon as you start. 
in blocks on every single level, apart from the old ones. They're, they're obviously DLC. You've got different weapons. But in yeah. Kino, you had the two pump and the Olympia, um, the Olympia, which is two pump, and the Carbine M14. Um, I picked them up and I got to wave 27. Wave 27 with just them. The amount of money that I had was mental and it was four players as well. I think someone um, left. Lucky he wasn't host because I was raging, but I didn't have no downs. Wave 27 and then wave 27 at the end of the round nearly. That's Mm. when I got my, that's when I got downed. But I, I just had the pistol, the knife, two pump and they weren't upgraded either i'd like to put that out there they weren't upgraded i was just running around the map MLG, mate. MLG. um collecting ammo shooting the enemies yeah fuck me it was taking loads of ammo <laughs> but i just wanted to prove a point of how good at zombies i actually generally was and it turns yeah. out i mean i was pretty good <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it was pr- I was pretty good. And again, the only reason I like Blops One Zombies as well is because again, that's got enough. You have to have all of them. Yeah, people might go get Blops free. If you get Blops free, you can get quite a lot of the maps. Yeah, you can get quite a lot of the maps if you buy the Zombie Map Pack, Zombie Chronicles. But you do not get. Call of the Dead with mm. George. George man. That's the that was the movie the movie one with Danny Trejo yeah, and yeah, Buffy yeah. the Vampire Slayer. I love that. George, the director. <laughs> George I mean man. Yeah. He was fucking hard as well. He yeah, he so man. He was he was annoying. He was annoying. Like as well, you'd have some games where you'd be playing with people and they'd they'd, they'd shoot them and it it annoy you. Mm-hmm. You have to party up and play with your buddies. Oh, definitely. Um, strategy. You had to, yeah, with that one. Um, with the colleges as well, the older ones, they stopped updating them after a while. Yeah. So there's still a few. There's still a few glitches that you can get away with using in zombies. I mean, I never the only glitch in zombies that I ever used ever was the one in five where you could get on the table, and that was it. And I used that basically in five. That's the one where you you're in the CIA, as you're in the Pentagon, and you can go down in the Pentagon under floors and stuff. Yeah, 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 I remember. That's that's on um, Blops one as well. Um, basically, you're in Star Area. One of the barriers, not on the side where the podium is, on the opposite side, the mm. um, right hand corner. You'd want to smash the glass in the bottom left hand corner because you could smash the whole glass, but you don't want to do that. You just want to smash it in the bottom left hand corner rebuild the barrier then you could jump on the barrier to the top of the doorway then you've got to like run and jump onto the table but the only problem with doing that is you've got to earn enough money to get the box and if the box the mystery box obviously hasn't spawned in a good location you're gonna be mashed because by the time you've got enough money to get to the mystery box which majority of the time it's it's it, at some point people might go well no the mystery box spawned in the same location all the time sometimes it did and on five majority of the time it did spawn in the same location mm. but it didn't a hundred percent of the time 80 percent of the time it did spawn in the same room um, near the power switch And by the time you've got enough money to do that, you'd go down and the mad scientists come 
and you'd get your box weapon and then he'd just come give you a nice good old bear hug and steal your weapon and you'd be raging. <laughs> so that right. one, yeah, I, it was I, annoying. I hate to be all that flannel, but apparently my hard drive is running out of space. <laughs> So uh, we might have to uh, quickly go through the last of our list. Oh, right. Um, right, so... We're, we're figuring this yeah. out, okay? We're figuring this out. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Um, uh, the next game I'll talk about is um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes, I've just Again, um, obviously... Horizon Zero Dawn, I haven't even, this just shows you how much uh, my opinion of Horizon generally is. I haven't even completed Horizon yet, but it still has gotten a place. It's still perched into my top 10. <clears throat> yeah, just yeah because... I only just started that game, but then The Last of Us 2 come out and, you know. Yeah, but I am... Last of Us 2 does take, a, take up a lot of time. Yeah. It does take up a lot of time. From what I've played but... Horizon, I do kind of understand yeah. You you play as a character named Aloy and early on in the game there was one scene where I mean I've got a lot of empathy and this one scene kind of annoyed me a little boy throws a rock at you yeah. and again people might well it's just a game why did you get annoyed mate I get annoyed at like loads of games just because I love games. If a game doesn't make me feel something, then I can't play it. It's not worth. It's not worth playing. It is not worth playing. And if I'm gonna play a game, I need it to test me, and I need it to test the, my surroundings. I just, I need, it needs to test me. Yeah. Yeah, if that makes sense. It and Horizon definitely tests you. I mean, just, again, you haven't, like, gotten that far into it, so I don't really want to ruin it for you. But there's tombs and stuff. When you go into the tombs and you get to the later on in the game and you go into the later tombs... Mm -hmm. And you start seeing um, flashbacks and you've got the whole world. And even like you're standing on a perch and you go to one of the locations where you can do the flashback with your earpiece. Yeah. You just go to a location, you print, um, it says C and it brings up an audio log and a picture of what the world used to look like. Yeah. It just it, it melts it melts me, man. I just I can't admire how much love that I have for that. Um, okay. yeah. The next game that I'll um talk about is Odd World Munch's Munch's Odyssey. Yes. Again, people that. <gasps> Why not Abe's Odyssey? Why not, mate? I mean, people are going to think less of me and they'll think, don't be a silly bastard. I don't care. Munch and his little wheelchair melted my heart, man. And people yeah. will be like, oh, why is he fucking saying well, Abe's in the game too? Yeah. And I played Abe's Odyssey. The only reason I'm loving Abe... Munch's Odyssey was the fact that it was 3D, you had the little fuzzles, and the, the fuzzles, man, when you'd walk up to them and you'd zap the little cage, and the cage would disappear, and Munch would be like, hello, and the <laughs> fuzzles would be like, and, they, <laughs> and then Abe, Abe just farting and stuff. That game to me, although Abe's Odyssey was a marvel, and then you got you had the remaster, didn't you? Noon Tasty again. Yeah. That was a marvel. And I'm hoping Soulstorm, when Soulstorm comes out, it's going to be another marvel too. But 
just for the sake of Munch's Odyssey was the third game in the series and how much more it, that came out it was on the original Xbox it was an original Xbox exclusive at first yeah. but I've got it on the PlayStation Vita and I mean just running around on the PlayStation Vita it's, it's quality it's quality and like I said because it's the third game in the series they've added more stuff to it which just makes it such a better game than the first and second one, Odyssey and Exodus. Yeah. Yeah. It's good when they can improve on the game because they're just keeping it the same every time they release. Yeah. yeah. Like FIFA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then um, I might as well just talk talk about my last one. Yeah. And I mean... Again, this my list. I'll see if I can get some honourable mentions in. But my last one is Mafia Free. Mafia Free. Yeah. When was that, sir? Mafia Free. That was um nineteen sixty eight. Yeah. You like your class? Um... Yeah. 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 I mean, it, <clears throat> people know who I am. I like certain things about the past. Not a lot of things. I'm not going to lie. Um, I like old time cafes. I like the old time cars. I like the old time outfits. I don't like the old time fucking slapping your wife about or the racism. I don't like that. Mm. I don't like that. I like from the 60s and the 50s. I like the music, the music, the music's quality, the cars. The outfits, I just, I, I kind of get why people say that it was a simpler time. I mean, some people shouldn't say that it's a simpler time because they're saying that it's a simpler time because of they were allowed to get away with what they got away with. Mm. But I'm saying that it's a simpler time because of I like it because of the music, the cars, and the outfits. And the Mafia Free, again, it's, I get that it's just a game, but the fact that you can get away with burning alive KKK members, I fucking love that. Yeah. Because fuck the KKK, man. The best part of the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you play. You play as Lincoln Clay, right? And then um, um, Vito from the second game, he's in it. Mm -hmm. He's in it. He's one of the generals. And then you've got Thomas Burke. He's another general. Again, I loved the second Mafia as well. And I loved um, Vito. But I think I love Lincoln Clay more. And it's a battle because... Thomas Burke as well. Thomas Burke sings a song. He sings a song just after you have a chat with him about um, his daughter and his son. Mm -hmm. And his son dies in, in the bar fire where Lincoln yeah, yeah. survives. And Lincoln's adopted dad and adopted brother die in the fire as well. And Thomas... Burke, he sings a song. The, the actor's voice, he can't sing, but the, the song yeah, is the just so good. The soul. Yeah, the soul. He's got soul behind it. And I actually like cry every single time he sings it. Mm. And it's not even like that grave a song. It's, it's to do with like, I'm not Irish. <clears throat> I'm um, Scottish. I was born in Edinburgh. Um, I don't know if anyone can like tell that by like I don't know if my accent is good or whatever. But um, the song basically is him singing, saying he wants Ireland to be a nation once again. And I mean, I just it, it, like it melts. It melts because you've just seen 
um, the flashbacks of the when the safe comes down after the Mardi Gras party. Yeah. You've got the southern culture, you've got the southern hospitality. It's in the 60s. You've got the quality music. And I just, there's just, I don't know, like, I think what would make it for me, and this possibly might be racist, and I apologize if it is, is if a southern if a woman in there, a black woman in there, like maybe Cassandra or someone said, would you like some gumbo? I mean, that would make it for me. Yeah. Maybe a little bit better. Um, it's not meant to be, it's just, it's, it's got the soul. It's got the soul and it's got the um, heart. And I love the fact that you can just, like I said, I'm going to repeat it again, burn to death KKK members. Because mm-hmm. fuck the KKK. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about this for a while because I think they're probably about to get cut off. <laughs> um, why is Halo 2 and 3? But not the story, the multiplayer. The multiplayer yeah. brought back so many memories for me. The original Xbox on, the, on Halo 2. Meant loads of uh, players getting together in lobbies to try and unlock the golden warhawk that didn't exist. The glitching, the glitching of the maps, the fucking sheer carnage there was with the swords, the needlers. It was just like no, the whole thing was just pure what gaming should be. The first proper first person shooter you had online on the original Xbox Live. And then the upgrade from the Xbox 360 for Halo 3. It was just all a classic time in my, my gaming life. Um, I don't know how many evenings I lost years of evenings to those games. And it was just incredible. Amazing. I love them games. Still play them occasionally on the Xbox One on the Master Chief collection. Yeah, it's we started a campaign didn't we on the first one and we were going to play it through a yeah. co-op campaign we should still we might have that. to kick yeah we need to kick start that back up again see yeah. if we can um we could even start sh- um streaming it yeah streaming our co-op, that, yeah. co-op campaign yeah mm-hmm. yeah no mm-hmm. that'd be six that'd see be my amazing. favorite halo um Obviously, it was Halo 3 ODST. ODST. Interesting. Interesting. Yes, I know. I, I know a lot of people might be like, it's, it's, that was quite a niche one. Hmm. The um, Halo 3 ODST. I don't know why. I just enjoyed that one. I quite like Reach so as well. much. Reach was good. Reach, Reach. Oh, yeah. man. Reach was good. <laughs> No, Reach was good. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we've still got a little bit of time, I might just skim through my honourable mentions just really quick. Yeah, go on, we got a really um, quick one. Right. Zelda Breath of the Wild. Quality okay. game. Mm-hmm. Um, Rayman 1, the PlayStation 1 version. Okay. That mm-hmm. was a quality game. Um, Banjo and Kazooie sixty four. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Su- Super Mario sixty four. Yeah. Assassin's Creed three, the third one. That was great. Yeah. Again, I, I, a lot of people might not like that, but it's it's in my honorable mentions. It, it, I just want to gain a little bit of credibility, just in case people might have not liked oh, mate, his top 10 shit, mate. This cunt didn't know what he's talking about. I don't give a shit, mate. Um, yeah. Need for Speed Underground 2. Oh, what a game. Yes. Best Need for fucking Speed game yeah. ever made. Fucking so Riders on the fucking Storm. <laughs> Riders on the Storm, yes. <laughs> Do you remember that game called Black? Yes, the PlayStation yes. 2 game. The PlayStation 2 game. The game that basically 
that came out and it was on PlayStation 2 and people that first person shooter that was on the PlayStation 2 you you could play that now still and it would still look like it shouldn't have been on PlayStation 2 it should have been on PlayStation fucking mm. 3 or 4 man that I game was so good access, isn't it? so you can't play on the PC um yeah yeah, I'm pr- it might be on Game Pass PC, PC yeah. Game Pass, yeah. Um, 007 GoldenEye 64. Yeah. I just remember playing um, four-player couch, couch play, man. I loved couch play. Four buddies playing That's fucking GoldenEye. Um co-op and we just what run around yeah the screen watching was real i don't give a fuck mate mm-hmm. don't tell anybody Shh. um but you can't not have golden eye 00764 um, the nintendo 64 one even anywhere close to your top 10 if you're not a gamer you've got to have it it's got to be close if not mm-hmm. it's got to be in there but, i mean these are the games that i said they were more influ- influential to me and that's the reason why I picked them. Yeah. Time Splitters 2, yeah Amazing. not the first one, the second one because again I remember playing it with my Same buddy. So much yeah. mm. Playing the co-op campaign, playing co-op with my buddy and that was, it was just good times. It was, just, it was, it was good times, Same yeah. Good times. Obviously Halo Free ODST, like I just said yeah. to you, um, and literally the first Last of Us, mm-hmm. um, Destiny One and Two, as well. They yeah. they are my honourable mentions. Nice. Good. Good, uh, good bits. Um, yeah, we'll have to wrap it up then because I'm pretty sure my laptop's about to explode. So, uh, <laughs> um. Thank you, everyone, for listening. I hope you enjoyed this slightly longer podcast this week. Um, We'll see you next time. Ta-ra. Good morrow, sir.